editor utility widgets have been around since Unreal 4, but not a lot of people actually start utilizing them themselves. I'm going to be showing you how to create this utility widget right here that once you click populate, fills in this list with all the actors in your level. And then I can go ahead and select something, for example, static mesh actor, click new, and it will automatically select all the static mesh actors in the level. Or I can go ahead and select point light, click new, and it'll select all the point lights. And if I want to, I can, of course, select something else and click add to. And now it has selected both these point lights and the status mesh actors. So it makes it selecting a lot easier because for example, in this level here, I have a lot of objects in here just because I have a lot of just individual cubes and props. And if I want to select my room manager, well, I either have to scroll through this entire thing or I have to use the search and go room manager and there it is. Now I can select it and there it is. Or in here, I can come down and just select the blueprint room manager, hit new, and it will select it no matter what I had selected before. Now that's all great and good, but one other thing I also wanted to do is because all of these are static meshes is I want to select by material. So now I can click on any object and then click select by material and it will select all the objects in your level that are currently using that same material, assuming they're currently static meshes. You can, of course, set it up for other things, not just static meshes, but I've configured it for static meshes. And that's what I'll be showing you as well. And this also works if you select multiple. So if I select the wall and the floors here and now click select by material, it goes ahead and selects all of these walls and all of the floor pieces. So this little tool just basically improves the speed and efficiency of just selecting and working with your environment. And this is just the basics. I want to show you how to get it all set up so you can get it working for yourself. So here I am in a brand new project. I'm in Unreal 5.4, but this should work in any Unreal 5 version. In fact, with some minor tweaks, this will also work in Unreal 4. There's just some nodes that have actual extra nodes that need to be plugged into them, but the general idea will still work. You might just need to adjust a little bit. So to get started, what I'm going to do is right click and instead of creating a actual normal widget, you go under editor utilities and create an editor utility widget. Now you have two different options. You can create a table light that retains the width of every column throughout the table or a layout for automatically having child widgets out of vertically or horizontally. In my case, I'm going to create a stack box so that way I can control the width and the positions of everything. And then I'm going to call it EUW for editor utility widget underscore selector and open it up. So if you ever worked with actual utility widgets or just UI and things of that nature in Unreal, you probably are familiar with the screen. If not, that's okay. The main thing is on the left here is all your stuff that you can add to your scene. On the right is the detail panel and the bottom left is your kind of stack and organization of how things work. So to get started, we're going to need a few things, starting with some buttons. So here under common, you can see editor utility button and we're going to want to grab it and you can drag it in right here or you can drag it in below and put it right under stack box and then you can see it is there. Now I'm going to want a few of them. So what I can do is I can grab ourselves a vertical box, which you can find if you search vertical or another way to do it is if you right click on editor utility button, you can go wrap with vertical box. And this basically puts whatever that is inside of a vertical box. So what is a vertical box? It basically, if I have more buttons, if I just duplicate this, you can see it is just continuing to place them down below, 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 below. So for this first button, I want to add some text on it. So I'm going to grab this text and I'm going to drag it on top of the editor utility button and it's put a, the text block below. I'll go ahead and select it and change what it says. And I'm just going to call this populate. So now with this word actually uh, put in, I can select the button and press control D and it'll go ahead and duplicate it three times. And the text is now automatically grabbed in there. And I can just go ahead and just rename this to be new, add to and select by material. Now you can of course write out the entire thing, but the longer it writes, you can see the bigger and wider this thing is. And if you're docking it inside of your UI, it's nice to have it a little bit more contained. The other thing I'm going to want to do is have the actual dropdown. So for the dropdown, I can go ahead and search in the palette for combo box. And now let's grab ourselves like editor utility combo box string. I can just grab it and just drag it out here. Now you can see it is actually going to put it the entire height. I don't want it to be the entire height. So here in the detail panel for vertical alignment, it is configured to fill vertically. I'm going to go ahead and align it top vertically and the size instead of auto, I'm going to say fill. So effectively, this now becomes the entire width. And if I go ahead and compile this, nothing has appeared because this needs to be run first. And the first time you're running, just right click on this and run your editor utility widget or you could press the button here to run it. So when I run it, you can see there's our widget, there's our drop down button. Nothing happens when I click because we haven't put anything into it. Now these buttons do anything, but now we have kind of the base in here. 
So let's start configuring these. To begin with, in this actual editor utility combo box, I'm gonna give it some options. The one I want to add is empty and the selected option will be empty as well. Now, all it is is just the name of it. It doesn't actually do anything. So if I compile it, you can see it says empty, which is great. And I also wanna make it a variable, which is done here in the top of the detail panel. I click is variable. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a name. Let's call it dropdown. Now you can of course leave it as the default names, but it's good to name things that make sense for you. And we also want to make all of these buttons actual variables as well. So for example, for this populate button, I'm gonna select is variable. And I'm gonna just call this button populate and I'm gonna do the similar thing for the other ones. So there we go, I've added and made it a variable for each one and I've added the name. And you can see here in the hierarchy, it actually updates the name accordingly as well. Now one thing you can do is actually modify the color. So if we change the color and opacity. You can see I could change the color of the text, but what I want to do is actually just modify the actual background. So under style, under normal, I can change the tint and change the color of it. So I can make this one, for example, a little bit green and change the populate to something like blue. So that way we know that these two are kind of along with the selection. We do this at the beginning and this is something else entirely. The colors are not needed, but it's there for you to customize visually however you want. So now we have all of this. So let's actually start modifying the actual functionality of all it all. And you can do that by going to the graph here in the top right next to the designer is the graph. And this allows you to now add all the functionality for your buttons. I'm not going to need any of these. I can just go ahead and delete all of them. They're unneeded for me. What I am going to need to do is configure these buttons here. Let's start with the populate button, which is the one that will load up that entire list. So by selecting button populate in the bottom here, I can just go ahead and say unclicked and press the plus button and it'll automatically create the event for me. So the way that we need to do this is first clear the current list so we don't have things coming in uh, over each other and we'll remove the empty one that we've added at the beginning. Then we need to go through everything in the entire level, check what class it's in and make a list of them. And then once we have the list, add that entire list to the actual dropdown and then we can go ahead and select it based on that. So in that order, let's grab our dropdown and actually do a clear options. So all of our options are gonna be clear. And now we want to get everything in the level. Now for editor utility widgets, the way you do that is by right clicking and searching for editor actor subsystem and then you can get the editor actor subsystem and from here you can drag out and get all level actors you can also get all the actor components but we need the actors only this gets us an array of every single actor so we can do a simple for each loop and then for each of them we can drag out of the array element and get class under utilities here. And this gets us the original class. Now, if you're not sure what a class is compared to just a regular object, well, basically a class is the original non-modified version. It's the one that's in the content browser, basically. If you have, let's say, 10 chairs in your level, well, they're all 10 unique chairs and they have their own references, they have their own transforms, but their class is still that of a chair. And the class doesn't have things like transforms, etc., because it is just basically the overarching thing. Probably not the best explanation, but hopefully that makes sense. So from here, I want to go ahead and add it to an array. Now to make it my life easier, I'm just gonna right click on this return value, promote to a variable, and I'm going to just call this actor classes in level. And I'm gonna delete this set. And then I'm gonna come here in the actor classes in level, and I'm gonna right click on the actor. I'm gonna make it an array. And the reason I deleted it originally is because if I don't delete it, it'll say, are you sure you're currently utilizing this? This will affect some things. And so to bypass that error and make it more smooth, I delete it first. So now I can grab this actor classes in level, grab myself a get node, and then I can do an add unique. So this will add the class of the loop every single time, but it will only do it once. So if you have multiple static meshes, it will not add 10 static meshes to this array. Now this is great, but what we probably wanna do is also clear this at the very beginning, because let's say you're, you've populated the list and you've made modifications and now you wanna repopulate it, but let's say you've now removed all the static meshes. You don't wanna keep those static meshes in that list then. So this actor classes and level, which is duplicated to the left, and just grab ourselves a clear, and I'll put it right before this clear options. But this makes sure we always start with a nice clean slate. From here, I'm going to grab the actual array and we're going to go through every single one that we have now done with a for each loop. And so from this actual class, what we need to do is get the name. So we can search get name to get the class display name. And this basically converts the class into just a string with the name, which is all we really need. And now we can grab our dropdown and do add option, which will add an option. And it requires a string 
input, which is very convenient because we just go ahead and plug it in. And once it, it has gone ahead and added all of the options, we want to select the first one. So again, I'll duplicate this drop down get node and I want to search for get option at index. If we want to just grab the very first one and from drop down, I'll go ahead and drag out and set selected option. And the option will be the whatever is hit index one on complete. So this is the graph basically now on Pipelate. So if I go ahead and compile this, you can see by default, this is empty. And now if I hit populate, it has populated with static mesh actor. And we can see other things here. Now we can select it and you can see it updates properly. But of course, we can't do anything with these just yet. So let's go ahead and start implementing the new and the add to functionality. If you guys are enjoying this tutorial, I would love to hit the like button. If you're new, consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. Let's get back to it. So similar to how we did the button populate, I'm going to go to button new and do on clicked and button add to and do on clicked as well. I'm going to grab just both of them because they're both basically going to be using the same graph. The only difference is the new selection will clear whatever was there before and the add to selection will not do the clear. It'll just continue to add to the selection that you have. So to get started, what we're going to do is use this add to and we want to grab all the level actors one more time. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to grab this part with the for each loop because we're going to need it and I'm going to duplicate it over right here and plug this in. Now I am going to have selected options here. So what I can do is right click on this return value, promote it to a variable and I'm going to call it selected objects. I'm going to delete it from here and we just need to grab the selected objects and do a clear. But we only want to do that when we're doing new. So I'll go plug that in here and from clear and then it goes into get all level actors the same as if you were doing the add to. So effectively now we have a list of strings of all the names of the classes. So we can just compare is the current thing that we're going through have the same class name as the thing that we have selected. And if they do, then go ahead and add it to the selection list. And if not, ignore it. And we can do the same thing as we did here. We can get the, get the class and get the class display name. So if you want, you can just select these two and duplicate it over, plug in the array element to get class and the class to the get class display name. Now we want to compare it to the actual dropdown selection. So we'll grab our dropdown and get selected option, which gets us the string of selected option. And now we're gonna go ahead and search for equals equals to see if they're equal. Now you can do equal exactly or equal case insensitive. It doesn't actually matter in this case because we're literally grabbing the same strings from the base to the end. So either one of these will work. I'll go ahead and use case insensitive and plug both of these in to compare. Then grab ourselves a branch node. And assuming that it does match, we want to add them to our selected objects. So with our selected objects array, I'll search for add. And on true, we're going to add this array element from the for each loop. Once it has gone ahead through the entire loop system and checked everything, we need to actually select the object. So I'm going to grab this editor actor subsystem. I'm going to duplicate it over and I'm going to grab ourselves a set selected level actors and complete. We're going to set, we're going to set them and it needs an array, which is great because we have now added things to our array. So I'll plug that in. Our selected objects go into actors to select and that's pretty much it. So now I can go ahead and compile this. And now again, this is empty. I can hit populate. You can see it has static mesh actor. Now if it's new, you can see on the right here, it's now selected static meshes. If I go in the outliner, you can see it has selected the floor and the sky sphere in the level. If I want to, I go and select the skylight, press new and select the skylight, which is great. That works. And if I want to, I can go ahead and select the direction light, click add to, and it's now selected both the skylight and the direction light, which you can see here in the outliner. So this is now already working to populate whatever you have in the level and quickly select things. Now, as always, this project along with the editor utility widget will be available on my Patreon where you can join these wonderful people here in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you wanna join the community with and chat with more like-minded people, consider joining the Discord. Links are down below. Thank you again to my patrons, and let's get back to it. The next thing is to set up is the select by material, which is very useful when you have multiple meshes and maybe one of them has one material and another one has another material, but they're all meshes and you wanna just isolate them really quickly. So just like before, I'm gonna select our button select by material and do on clicked. So to select by material, first we need to grab the information from whatever we have selected, whether it be one thing, two things, etc. We wanna know what are all the materials 
of our selected object. I'm going to be setting it up specifically for static mesh actors, but you can, of course, configure it for whatever you want. And I'm also going to be assuming that you're grabbing the information from the first material slot. If you have static mesh actors, for example, from with 10 materials, maybe you want to go through every single one, check how many it has, etc. That will entirely depend on your use case. So once again, I need to grab my editor actor subsystem. So I'll just take the one from above and duplicate it over. And now with this, I can go ahead and grab are get selected level actors, which gets us everything that we have selected. And now we can do a simple for each loop. So it's gonna go through everything that we have selected and we need to check that it is a static mesh. So from the array element, I'm going to cast to static mesh actor from the loop body. If it fails, then we can go ahead and ignore it. But if it succeeds as static mesh actor, we can drag out of here and get material. And the material we want is from the static mesh component. Now by default, index zero will be the one we use. And that is perfect for us because that is the first material. And from the return value, I'll go ahead and right click, promote to a variable. This is going to be our materials in selection. And just like before, I'm going to delete the set node, right click on the name, convert it to an array. So now grab your materials in selection and we want to add unique. And then on the return node, plug it in here. So that way, if you have select multiple things that are using the same material, there's no reason for it to actually add multiple slots in here. But now that it has information here, we want to make sure that this is clear at the very beginning. So I'm going to take it and duplicate it to the left and then grab ourselves a clear node. So it is clear at the very beginning and then it grabs all the information and populates that array. The next thing to do is to check all the level actors as we have been doing before. So I can grab our editor actor subsystem, get all level actors and get the for each loop as we had before, duplicate it down here and plug it in from our completed node. The difference is we want to make sure that we're checking only the static mesh actors as before. So I'm going to grab this cast and duplicate it as well and plug this right through. So now we want to check that this material is the same as the ones in here. So in fact, we can actually just grab these as well, duplicate it down, plug them in. We now have access to the material in the slot zero. And now we want to grab these materials in selection, duplicate it down here and do a for each loop with break because we're going to break it if it already has found a match. There's no reason for it to continue further. And what we're going to do is just grab out of this array element and search for equals equals for the equals operator. And we're going to compare that that is equal to this. If the material inside of the static mesh is equal to anything inside of this array, it is returning true. And if it is returning true, we're going to store that information. So to make our life easier, I'm going to take our selected objects here. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it matched material objects. And then I can drag it out and do a add node here from true. And this is going to add the original thing in the loop, this array element, and plug it all the way through. Now, once it has found something to be true and it added it, we can go ahead and break this from this add node output. We're going to plug this into the break because if it, for example, had 10 things to go through, there's no reason for it to go through the rest of the nine if it found it on the first attempt. And now we need to select our things. So just like we did before, we can grab this editor actor subsystem set selected level actors, take this over and duplicate it down here and plug it in from the complete. And the actors select are going to be our matched material objects. So let's plug that in. And once this is plugged in, the last thing we want to do is make sure that this is actually cleared at the very beginning. So I'm going to take this, duplicate it to the left here, right at the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and clear it. And now I can plug this select by material all the way through and get everything connected through. So now we have a graph like this. So I've gone ahead and duplicated some boxes around. Now they're all just using different materials, but they're all just the static meshes. So as before, we can populate and select static mesh actors by doing new or even add two when you're doing a first selection. Either one technically works, but of course this selects everything. And we want to maybe select only the white cubes. So I can go ahead and select one of them, click select by material, and you can see it has now selected only the white cubes. Same thing, I can select the green one, select my material, and it's only selected the green. And if I want to, I can select multiple, so I can select the white and the green by holding shift, and then click select by material, and now it has selected all the white ones and all the green ones. And keep in mind that if you take this and you just pin it over here, let's say, when you close and reopen the editor, this will still be here. You do not need to keep running it every single time. So all of a sudden, you just have a really quick way of selecting similar things in your level. So assuming that you're building out an entire environment, you can set it up where you can select things by the object or by the material or by anything else. But you now have the basic framework to start creating any kind of selection process you would like. But hopefully this has gone in your brain thinking about all the possibilities, all the things you can now create that will make your life easier in your workflow. And if you want to check out something a little different, check out this video right here where I show you how to start utilizing the new PCG biome feature in 5.4.